Good evening YouTube, I'm Chucky2009 and tonight I'm going to be showing y'all how to stick weld some thin sheet metal here. Alright, now we'll get going in a second, but first just a couple short words. And the first is stick welding sheet metal is really not ideal. Uh, there are better ways to go about doing that, such as with a wire feed welder like this fine Hobart 187, or with say a TIG setup or something. But if you don't have that, you know, stick welding thin material definitely doable with the right electrode. So these are the electrodes we're going to be burning tonight. They are 332nd inch Hobart 6013s. And we're going to be welding this fine piece of sheet metal here. This is 14 gauge. And uh, the cool thing about 14 gauge is that 14 gauge means the same thing as 330 seconds of an inch. So as you can see, this is one of those fine 330 second inch electrodes that I just showed you all a second earlier here. I've gone ahead and put it up against the edge of the, uh, the piece of sheet metal. And as you can see, it looks like the electrode might be a little bit fatter than the piece of sheet metal. Who knows, it might be 16 gauge. But, uh, you know, for our purposes, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, it's about the same thing, and we're going to weld it tonight. We got the uh, stick made of awesomeness over here. This is what we're going to be welding with tonight. And as you can see, I have it set to DC electrode positive. Now 6013 is one of very few electrodes you can run on AC or either DC electrode polarity. I certainly prefer positive. I know a lot of people like negative. Uh, unless you're working off some strict code or blueprint or something, it's really all just personal preference. And we're running our 332nd inch electrodes at, I don't know, a little over 60 amps, maybe 65 or so. I've gone ahead and ran a couple joints myself just to get back in the swing of things. We have a lap joint here. And a fillet weld over here. So, now it's time to start welding out these joints I've prepared. We have three fillet welds and two lap joints. Now, real quick here, let's just take a minute to talk about heat and warpage control. Alright, so, if I were to start here and just weld all the way across this joint, I would probably warp the living daylights out of this piece of material. Maybe not as bad as other things because this is a fairly small sheet of material. It's 14 gauge, but if you're working with anything thinner or, you know, like a large sheet of material, it's going to be very, very susceptible to warpage. And the best way to keep that down is to spread out where you weld. Only weld about an inch at a time. So what I'd do is I'd start here, weld to here. Stop, give it a few minutes to cool. Start here, weld to the beginning of the first weld. Stop, give it a few minutes to cool. Or you could just weld here, weld here, weld a little bit on the back side, you know, weld in all sorts of random places all over the joint, and what that'll do is greatly help to spread out the heat input and reduce warpage. So yeah, as you can see, whenever you run on DC electrode positive as compared to electrode negative with 6013, you get a noticeable increase in, spl in splatter, but you also get a whole lot more penetration, so I feel like it's worth it. And uh, yeah, probably not the prettiest weld I've ever come up with in my life, but hey, you get the idea, and uh, hopefully this video helps you all out. So, anyway, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more.